everybody, it's Leroy from Leroy Gaming, and today's an exciting day because after today's Outriders World Slayers event, I'm finally allowed to talk to you about everything that I've learned about this new expansion. And I want to thank People Can Fly for providing me with early access to this game so that I can create content for you today. And today and over the next couple days, I'm going to have some exciting videos giving you some in-depth information on the new features coming. Now in this video, we're going to go and give you an overview of everything that is coming in this expansion. And there's definitely some good stuff. So stick around and drop a like if you are excited about Outriders and the World Slayers expansion. Now, we're going to begin by mentioning the new campaign. Me, myself, I was really pleasantly surprised at the quality and enjoyment I found from the original campaign. And more surprisingly, about the quality of their side missions. Now, in Outriders World Slayer, we are getting a whole new campaign of a really, really cool and meaty uh, new antagonist. She definitely means business, and in the footage that we've had and interactions we've had so far, I have really, really high expectations for what's going to happen with her when it comes to the main story as well as the end game. And similar to the main story we, in the original, I think we can expect to see some great side content as well. So this should be a nice meaty portion that will help out both casual players as well as give hardcore players that like the end game grind something fun to enjoy at the beginning now speaking of the new campaign there is going to be a brand new option when you boot up the expansion that allows you to do a free boost to level 30 so if you're a returning player wanting to create a new character or even if you're brand new to the game and for some reason you don't want to play the original content you can create a character and have it start at level 30 which is the max level and then start on the expansion content. Now again, I wouldn't recommend skipping the main story for the base game if you've never played it because it's quite good, but it is an option nevertheless, and you can do this as many times as you want. The next big change and the next big welcome change is the introduction of Apocalypse Tears. So in the original game, there was a little bit of confusion because there were world tiers which was the difficulty of your content for the actual world. But then when you get to the end game, which is the expeditions, you had a whole complete different system that had nothing to do with the world tiers. Well, now with the expansion, they have introduced apocalypse tiers and there's roughly 40 of these tiers. Now, what's nice about this is that for the pre-expansion, you can actually now level through apocalypse tiers levels 1 through 15 and these basically take the place of world tiers what's nice about apocalypse tiers is that they apply to everything and once you get to the expansion you can then go past level 15 and all the way to 40 and again this difficulty will apply to expeditions it will explain apply to the main world of the game and also to the new endgame system that they will be detailing in the near future. The next huge feature that is going to really give this game a long endgame is the Ascension Level Progression System. So you can think of this as an alternate level system that you see in other games like Diablo 3, for example. There are 200 levels of this that you can gain, and you gain these levels only by killing enemies. So quest exp does not count towards this there are four general categories where you can input these points and you can put them into any category at any time when you level up and the categories are anomaly endurance brutality and prowess each one of the categories allows you to input up to 50 points and this is going to allow you to kind of specialize and buff whatever you want to buff it covers every type of passive imaginable in the game. So for example, if you want Weapon Life Leech and you don't have that on your character innately or not enough of it, well, you can pump points to Weapon Life Leech. You can get more Armor Pen if you're a Devastator and you don't have enough Armor Pen. You can get Skill Cooldown, etc. So basically every major element of the game, this is a way for you to buff that. And over time, quite significantly, again, 50 points per category, total of 200 levels above level 30. 
Now, in my opinion, the most significant new system is the PAX Perks system. These are basically new passive trees. And every class has basically two different new trees. And there are 10 potential unlocks per tree. Now, as you go through the new expansion, you're going to earn a total of three new perk points for this. And then when you get into the new end game, you're going to have the opportunity to unlock two more. So a total of five perk points. Now these nodes, you're going to be able to go to go down these trees and you have enough points to basically make it to the end of any one of these capstones per tree. There's three different capstones, or you could choose to kind of go partially down multiple uh, paths. Now, the key thing here is that every one of these nodes is significant. There are no filler like 6% anomaly nodes like the normal passive trees, and they will create a, a great amount of variety for builds. You're gonna be able to respect these easily, similar to how you can respect the passive trees, so you don't have to worry about that. I will be coming out with four separate videos over today and tomorrow that will go over and show you every single PAX perk point for each class so make sure to check out those videos some of them are truly build changing and making now this wouldn't be a true expansion without new legendary gear and the game brings us 100 new legendaries it's gonna start with two five piece sets for each class of new set bonuses in addition there are gonna be two three piece general sets introduced and then the remainder of the legendaries are going to be lots and lots of new guns. Now, in addition to just new legendaries, there's a whole new level of customization that's going to be brought with a new feature. And these are basically kind of like the ancient variants on epic and legendary gear that you saw in games like Diablo 3. And basically, randomly, epic and legendary gear that drops for you can roll with a third mod slot as you see in the picture here now this mod slot will provide you with unique mods that you cannot get in other slots now you cannot re-roll these positions so in this example ruler of leeches killing shots increase weapon leech by 20 percent for 20 seconds that's going to stay on that weapon no matter what you can re-roll critical point here you can re-roll clip ruler but you cannot touch ruler of leeches However, you can break this piece of loot down, and if you do, Ruler of Leeches will go into your book of modifiers, and then when you go to modify other weapons, you can in theory take Ruler of Leeches and apply it to either that first or second slot on a different weapon. So it is possible to have a tier 3 mod from a weapon in the second slot, and then you could apply one of these new mods to the tier one, for example, and then have two of these new mods up plus a tier three mod from the previous game, as well as one of the new ones that are going to be introduced with the new legendary pieces. So what this means for builds is that previously in the vanilla version of this game, you had a total of 10 slots on armor that you could play around with and two slots for weapons. Now, in theory, you could basically roll and have a total of 15 mod slots to play around with for your armor and three mod slots for your weapons. So this adds a whole new level of diversity for builds. So between that and the new PAX perks, it's going to give us dozens, hundreds, thousands of new potential builds that I'm really looking forward to diving into. Now, I did mention at the beginning that in addition to the, addition to the new campaign, there's going to be a whole new endgame. Expeditions are still going to be part of the game, but it's no longer going to be the ultimate endgame. We currently don't have details that we are allowed to share on this, but People Can Fly will be sharing more information about this feature soon. And as soon as we're allowed to, I will make sure that we discuss it with you guys here as well. Now, the final piece of information is the release date. And I will say that I'm quite surprised that we are going to get to check out and play this expansion much sooner than I had expected. 
the World Slayer expansion will be releasing on Thursday, June 30th, 2022. So we're going to be able to return to Enoch rather shortly. Now, tell me, are you excited about returning to Enoch? If you are, let me know in the comments. If you're not, let me know in the comments. And as always, I will be providing you extensive build guides and other guides for this game moving forward. I will also be streaming it on twitch.tv forward slash Lero Gaming Stream as soon as, as I'm allowed to. And if you enjoyed playing with me, getting uh, carries and having fun with me on stream in the past with the vanilla game, well, you can look forward to much more of that coming soon. That being said, guys, I hope you enjoyed this initial video. Make sure to check out the other videos coming out today and tomorrow covering this news about the expansion and more in-depth information on the new features. Do drop a like and subscribe if you want to see more Outriders content. And finally, if you want to go to the next level and support me and the channel, make sure to check out the link in the description to my merch store. Lots of cool swag, t-shirts, cups, etc. All those purchases go a long way to supporting the channel. Thank you for all the support, guys, and we'll see you in the next video.